This cannot be. An abyss has been carved into the earth. Oh dear goddess. Hugo, what are you planning? It's... Don't be ridiculous. You can't be serious! The Aether Wars, the Aeropolis? Because of that nonsense, Leon is? Stan, what are you doing? What do you think? We're gonna avenge Leon! Hugo, because of people like you, I won't allow it. I'll never forgive you! Calm down, Stan! He does not sound very calm. ANOTHER ANIMATED CUTSCENE, MY WORD! Is that sword coming out of the bottom of this thing? Is that the sixth swordian? Am I remembering wrong? And they they said that there were six Sordians at the start of the game, didn't they? I could have sworn they did. Maybe the sixth one only comes up in Tales of Destiny 2? Did they really have that level of foresight that they knew they'd do a sequel to this Tales game specifically? When they didn't do a sequel to Fantasia? Well, the Draconis got wrecked. All right, good one, Stan. Where is this place? It looks like we crash landed near Sangold Castle. What the? It seems Diecroft is beyond the Draconis's altitude threshold. So then it's hopeless. Darn, let's try it again. Yeah, what could go wrong? The sixth was messed with before time skip and couldn't speak anymore? No, that was the fifth one. The one that Woodrow has is the fifth one. Yada yada. That might have been retconned in this version? That's stupid. Remember Destiny 2 was out for half a decade when this release came out? Yeah, I know. I'm not stupid. I'm aware. But if they changed the... They shouldn't have changed dialogue in this remaster or remake, rather. Dialogue in this remake should not have been changed from the original, regardless of what happened in the sequel. That's stupid. That's dumb. I, I don't like that. If they added another sword in the second game, in Destiny 2, surely they had an explanation for it in Destiny 2 to explain why there was suddenly another sword. They don't need then, in a remake of the first game, to retcon and just change the way they act in this one. That, that's stupid. That's just really dumb. Why won't it start? Yeah, I think you broke it. Move it! Why aren't you moving? It sustained a considerable amount of damage during the crash. In its current state, we won't be able to take off. Darn. Darn! Darn it all! For now, let's go back to the city. That's right. We need to discuss what to do from here. Oh, hello. Let's go back to Daryl Sheed. We need to regroup and rest. This music. Oh, the background now has all the stuff up in the sky. Interesting. Okay. Dang, I wonder if they really killed Leon or if he's going to show up at the very end or not. Leon was neat. I know that he's like a fan favorite Tales of character, I think I've been told. I don't really see why all that much. I mean, he, he was neat. I don't think he was anything super special, though. The inhabitants of the city are also quiet. Or also quite upset. I can't read. No wonder. If you were shown a floating city like that and even attacked. Sordian Masters, what the heck is this? How can such a large building float in the sky? It's incredible. This intense light, such technological power. You know, why are you so excited when your country is being destroyed? The earth-shattering ordinance, Belkrant. That's the true nature of the light released from Dicroft. As the name implies, its purpose is to destroy the earth. You said the Aeropolis were used in the Aether Wars. 
The Aether Wars. I have no choice but to tell you the truth. A thousand years ago, there was a great war involving all humankind. It was between the ground forces, to which we belonged, and the Aetherian army of the Aerial Cities. So the Aether War? It wasn't just a legend, was it? The Eye of Automoni played a key role in the Aether War. It was the source of the great calamity that befell the world. Ganondorf. I'm sorry, I didn't say anything. We wanted to erase the memory of the Aether War from the history of mankind. As to not repeat the mistakes of the past. But as a result, the Aeropolis had been revived. People of the world below, do you see our power? Hugo. What's he going to say? Above you floats the Aeropolis from the time of the Aether War. After a thousand years, we have awakened them from their slumber. Why? To restore the glory of the Aether Empire to this world, of course. Thus the Aether War begins anew, and with it, a new chapter. This reminds me of Pokemon Ranger Guardian Sons. <laughs> of all the games to be reminded of. As a gift, we granted Sangal the taste of Belkrant's power. This ultimate power, that which can only be described as divine, is ours alone. In the past, many glorious Aeropolis graced this world. Oh, it's Johnny. However, after the last war, they were all confined to the darkness. Darkness within darkness. However, I say that was humanity's fatal mistake. People of the Earth below, take a look at the world you live in. A barbaric one full of archaic technology where strife and poverty continue unabated. I'll keep this simple. Humanity has remained stagnant for millennia. Very soul hackers, too. It left, if left, wait, if left to you fools, humanity will never reach its potential. I couldn't read that for some reason. Therefore, we will create a new world, one where only the chosen are welcome. We will now realize our dream that was foiled a thousand years ago. Are you like a descendant of the Hathor people or some nonsense? Forgiveness shall not be offered. No exceptions will be provided. Oh, dang. You fools below can only crawl upon the earth like insects. That which you call home will be forever enshrouded in darkness. Tremble before our might and await your fate. <laughs> Evil laugh. Well, that was fun. Hugo, are you going to pretend to be the king of the Aetherians? The way he spoke reminded me of... What do we do now? Even with the Draconis, we won't be able to reach the Atropolis. Is there really no way for us to fight back? No, we're not beaten yet. We can't just let this go. Do you hear me, Hugo? We won't let you have your way. We'll make you pay for what you've done. We will find our way up there. We will avenge Leon. Did you get that? You'll pay for this, Hugo. Such a spirited young master. Well said. What? It can't be. That's not possible. However, this voice is unmistakable. Is it Ignatz or whatever? Whatever his name is. Ignatz is a character from, uh, whatchamacallit. Three houses. Wielder of the Sordians, now is not the time to become disheartened. It's still possible to emerge from this victorious. Who is talking? Ritora? Who? Mercurius Ritora. He was the one who once led us as the commander of the ground forces. I embedded my consciousness into the core crystal for emergencies such as this one. Oh, dang, you can do that, huh? Where does your voice come from? The communication function that's built into me is being used. I'm currently in the heart of Radisrol. You must join me at once so we may strategize. Gather yourselves and make for Radisrol without delay. 
It has been a thousand years since we've received such an order. We can definitely do this. We've managed to overcome everything so far, right? That's right, Stan Aileron. We cannot afford to hesitate. We must use everything at our disposal to succeed. That's the Sordian team. All right, I understand. Everyone, let's move out. The Leviathan awaits you outside. Oh, we're finally using the Leviathan again? Redis Roll roams the seas. Go out and meet it. Let's go. Your Excellency, I would like to work with them to gather information. All right, you have permission. We're taking the weird science dude with us. Leviathan looks so small. Oh, wait. Oh, it has a speed thing at the bottom. I thought I was going to be controlling it, but that is not the case. Hey, look, there it is. So this is Radis Roll. I await you in the heart of Radis Roll. All right, so we got to get to him. Probably going to fight some stuff on the way. Let's go to the command center. We need to see Ritora. Well, things have gone insane, huh? A lot of stuff happened in the past, like, half hour. So this Ritora person we're going to meet. What's he like? He's a man with a wealth of knowledge, solid, ju solid judgment, and outstanding leadership. You talk about him like he's perfect. Our elite squad of soldiers required an equally elite com commandant. I was going to say commander. I'm looking forward to meeting him. Let's go. The ones left behind won? For such a fate to befall Leon. I guess Leon's like actually dead. Leon really cared a lot about Marion, didn't he? Just thinking about how they took advantage of his love for her, it's beyond evil. I suppose there's no sense grumbling about it. In times like these, I must put on a brave face. I'd say Leon's sacrifice redeemed him. I refuse to condemn the guy. I don't agree. What Leon did was unforgivable. Whoa, hey, ain't that a little harsh? It's true that he saved us in the end, and I'm thankful, but to part like that was simply horrid. It made us feel like we abandoned him. At this rate, Rudy will. Is there something wrong with Rudy? Ah, oh, no, it's nothing. Shaltir was still with him. Why did this have to happen? Even above his study as a, above his duty as a Sordian, he chose to remain at Leon's side. An extremely human decision. It would be easy to just brush it off as a foolish act, but I feel like that is something we cannot do. I believe this raises one of us one of the biggest questions about us Sordians. Are we or are we not humans at heart? Ah. Uh. That fool. Alright. Well, I guess Leon's dead. Unless he comes back. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back. I guess we'll find out as we go. I'm warping? Is this the same place that we went to get Clemente? It looks basically the same. And also, I think we just transferred to the final room. Yeah. Isn't this the room where we found Clemente? Alright, yeah, okay, cool. Indeed it is. We have the Tesseract. Welcome, Sordian team. After so many years, I'm overjoyed to be able to gather with everyone like this once more. Is that Ritora? It's a holographic image. We can play children's card games with them. As a new master, there are still many things you may not understand. I will clarify any lingering doubts. Afterwards, we must decide on the appropriate countermeasures. Then I'd like to ask you something right away. What exactly is Hugo trying to do? Giving form to the Aether Sphere through terraforming? Terraforming? The chunks of Earth broken up by Belkrant are drawn into the sky to create a new layer. That is the formation of the a an Aether Sphere around the Earth. Ooh, interesting. Spreading like ivy in the sky is the newly formed Aether Sphere itself. Currently, it's about 25% complete. I estimate that if Belkrant fires three more blasts, the sky will be completely covered. If that happens, our Earth will be... It will become a world of complete darkness and all life will die out. Dang. No. 
So we must stop it before that happens. We cannot let our earthly world be ruined. What do we need to do? We will use the same Blitzkrieg strategy we used in the last war. We will elevate Radis Rall to the surface and land it directly on Diecroft. The surface? Has Radis Rall always been able to do this? Yes. After it is in position, you and the other Sordian Masters will break into Diecroft. It's the same thing we were trying to do with the Draconis. It's just like what happened a thousand years ago. You think Radis Rall can reach altitudes that the Draconis could not? That's correct. Well, it sounds like it did it before, so... All right! The goal is to defeat Hugo and take back the Eye of Automoni. It's not too late. Now, before the Aether, Aether Sphere is complete. It's gonna be a race against time. Indeed. We must launch the operation as soon as possible and settle this matter at once. Leave it to us! We'll avenge Leon while we're at it. Stan, about that? Yeah? No, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. What, do you think Leon's alive or something? I don't know, I just kind of find it kind of weird to imagine that Leon is dead, because I don't understand why he's apparently such a popular character in the franchise. I wonder if it's just a matter of, like... Like, nostalgia, almost? Maybe, like, a Tales of Destiny back... I mean, it's one of the first games in the franchise, so back in the day, like, it was one of the only Tales of games, so it's, like, one of the ones that people know the most or played the most when the series was still new. So, like... People have, like, a lot of connection to Tales of Destiny because when they were younger, it was the one that they had to play or something, so they just really love it. Kind of like how I don't understand why people like Vesperia. Like, I mean, this game is better than Vesperia, for sure. The characters are more interesting at large, although Yuri is, was really good in uh, Vesperia. So was Judith and Raven. Those three characters were great. It was unfortunate they were in such an awful storyline and the other characters weren't all that good IMO. But, like... I don't know. Leon just doesn't, uh... He just, uh, I mean, none of the characters in this game really stand out that much to me. To be completely honest. Is the main thing. Like, none of them are bad, but... I, I don't know. None of them are just, like... None of them really have super standout moments. The most standout moment in this game was Leon sacrificing himself, but I don't know. I, like, wasn't that connected to Leon in the first place? Part of it is also because I've only been playing this game for like 15 hours. Like, Tales of games are longer nowadays. It does feel like we're getting really close to the end. Like, I don't know. I don't know where the game could really, like, after we get on the Aeropolis or whatever and beat up Hugo and take the Eye of Automoni, I don't really know where the game could go from there. Maybe, like, the, the past, like, some kind of past Aether King or something, like, comes back to life from the Eye of Automoni or something and is, like, a true final boss because, you know, they do that... That classic JRPG, like, hey, you have to fight, like, some ancient evil or some godlike creature at the very end after we beat Hugo, maybe? But even then, that would only lead to, like, one more dungeon or something. I don't know. But, uh, I, it feels like we're getting really close to the end of the game. The game's only been roughly 15 hours. So, maybe it's just a case of, like, I expect more character building in general for characters. Like, you know, in, in Zillia, Graces, uh, Berseria, Arise... Uh, Abyss? Abyss is the eighth game in the series, so Abyss is fairly old, but Abyss had amazing character development for Luke, mainly, but also really good stuff for Tyr, I remember having a really good story. Jade was amazing. He didn't have much character development, but he was a classic case of, like, Jade as a character is already developed. He's just awesome. Um, Guy was really cool. Natalia had a lot of... I think it was it Natalia or Natalie? I think her name's Natalia. Natalia had a lot of really cool stuff going with her backstory and whatnot and, uh her relationship to Ash and whatnot. Ash was a great character. So, like, I don't know. There, uh, Symphonia also had some really good stuff. I really liked Sheena and Zelos in Symphonia. They were amazing characters. Kratos was pretty cool. Um, I don't know. All of those, all of those other Tales of games, the newer ones and some of the other older ones, they just feel like they fleshed out their characters so much more than Destiny has thus far that I don't really get why Leon... I could understand people being like, oh, I love Leon. He was, like, my favorite in Destiny. He's really cool. But, like, saying, like, oh, Leon is my favorite in the Tales of franchise? I, maybe, uh, unless he comes back to life and does more stuff, maybe he comes back in Tales of Destiny too. I mean, this game has a sequel. I have no idea. But, like, unless... Unless something happens and, like, more things go for him, I, I don't really see how he could be so well-liked. Remember there's a Leon route? Yeah, but I was already told that the Leon route is, like, kind of just rehashing and a little boring. Which is why I don't plan to play it when I'm done with this game. So... 
I don't know. Even if there is a Leon route, I don't really see how they could add to his character so much that he would be, like, one of the most popular characters in the franchise. I don't really see how, th how that could ever come across other than, again, other than just, like, a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for him because Tales of Destiny was, like, one of the first Tales of games they played or something. What a weird guy. Before the mission, there is a place I want you to go. Ah, uh, so we've got one more dungeon to do before ending the game. That's cool. These ruins are located in the Inner Bay area, south of the Second Continent. In there is a device called the R Key, which will grant Radis Roll the ability to ascend. I want you to retrieve it. It's not far from Linea Village. Is that so? I never knew that was there. While you go get the R Key, I'll continue to analyze the current situation. To ensure we'll be able to handle anything that may come up. Please let me help. Ryan Reynolds, you're here. 